guys and welcome back to my channel this week for another episode of makeup and crime time if you are new here welcome thank you so much for clicking on this video today if you do enjoy this type of content don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell as i post videos every single week and i would love it if you would join me so today guys it's going to be a crazy one so grab your snacks grab your drink whatever you need to do to spend some time with me today and let's just get right into this case. This is the case of Megan Hargan. On July 14th of 2017, the bodies of 23-year-old Megan Hargan and her 63-year-old mother Pamela Hargan were found dead in their home in what initially appeared to be a murder-suicide. Pamela was found in the laundry room with a gunshot wound to the head and Helen was found upstairs in her bedroom. She also had a gunshot wound to the head. However, the 22 caliber rifle had been placed between her feet. At first, it had appeared that Helen had shot her mother before turning the gun on herself. However, police quickly grew suspicious of Helen's sister and Pamela's daughter, 39-year-old Megan Hargan. Even the medical examiner had said that the ballistics were not appearing to show that Helen's death had been a suicide. Megan also lived in the house with her 8-year-old daughter, and it was said that she was very jealous of her sister. She even believed that the mother, Pamela, liked Helen better and that she favored her more over Megan. There was allegedly a dispute over the mother, Pamela, helping Helen and her boyfriend, Carlos, buy a home. And although police had always been suspicious of Megan, they didn't really have a lot to go on at the time and it would take over a year to actually be able to build up enough evidence to arrest her. Police had found evidence of Megan attempting fraudulent money transfers from her mother's account just one day before the murders. What are the main things people kill for? Money, love, and drugs. So Pamela was a successful executive and Helen was a recent graduate of the University of Texas. Megan had attempted to steal over $420,000 from her mother's account. Of course, the bank notified Pamela of this and Pamela probably thought, what the F? and she ended up putting a freeze on the account. The very next day at 11.30 a.m., Helen called her boyfriend Carlos crying. She told him that her sister had shot her mother and she could hear her dying. Megan had come into Helen's room and calmly told her that she had just shot their mother, that she had caught her doing an escort deal and threatened to take away her young daughter. So Carlos had told Helen to get out of the house, obviously, but Helen said she was concerned for her niece, who was also Megan's eight-year-old daughter. It doesn't say whether or not she was in the home at the time or what exactly was meant by that she was worried about her, but I certainly hope she wasn't home at the time. At some point, they lose contact, and for whatever reason, Maybe she was concerned for her sister, or maybe it was for her niece. I mean, I'm not sure, but for whatever reason, she did not call the police. Megan went downstairs and transferred money from her mother's account before returning upstairs and shooting Helen in the head. Megan then took the gun and placed it between Helen's feet to make it look like she had shot their mother and turned the gun on herself. She then staged the scene to look like it had been a murder-suicide. Helen's boyfriend, Carlos, then began receiving very strange messages from Helen's phone, and police were later able to confirm that she had already been deceased by that time. Clearly, it wasn't her sending those messages. They said things such as, everything's okay and don't worry i'm not mad at megan and the police were actually able to later prove that it was megan sending those text messages after she had already committed the murders 
So Helen's boyfriend, Carlos, had ended up calling the police after he had lost contact with Helen. Of course, Megan began immediately putting all of the blame on Helen. She was saying that Helen was upset with her mother because her mother was allegedly going to cut her off of helping her build the house that she was going to help her build because she was moving in with her boyfriend and Pamela, the mother, allegedly didn't like the boyfriend. She told them that she loved her sister Helen but that she hadn't been acting herself in the past few months. However, after a 16-month investigation, the police were able to arrest Megan on suspicion of murdering her mother and sister. She was arrested on November 9th, 2018. They were able to prove that she had gun residue on her hands. Obviously, the text messages that were sent from Helen's phone after they were already dead. They were also able to prove that the bullets had entered Helen's head that were inconsistent with being self-inflicted gunshot wounds as well as they had found Megan's DNA on the weapon, as well as several other pieces of evidence. And let's not forget that her mother obviously grew suspicious of somebody stealing money from her and probably was suspicious that it was Megan. So Megan was found guilty on two counts of first degree murder in March of this year. She will be sentenced, hopefully, to life in prison in October of 2022, which is also this year. What a tragic and horrific case, guys. I mean, let me know what you think in the comments down below. This is just a clear case of greed and maybe being spoiled even. The mom was uh, allegedly a very successful executive and maybe she didn't know how to say no. And when she finally put her foot down when it came to the oldest daughter, Megan, she didn't like that she was helping her youngest daughter get a home. And she didn't like the fact that her mom was proud of her youngest daughter. I mean, Megan was 39 years old. She should have been well on her feet. Clearly, she wasn't. It just amazes me how far some people will go, even when it is involving their own families. Helen's aunt had said in an interview that it was super hard for her and the family to have Helen, who was also a victim in this case, blamed for over a year in the media. They knew this whole time that she had not done this to her mother and she had not done this to herself. They knew that it wasn't her. But that is it for this case today. Again, let me know in the comments down below what you guys think. Crazy. Also, let me know if you would like me to cover any cases. And until next time, don't forget to subscribe if you're new here and you do enjoy this type of content. I truly do love it when you guys come hang out with me. So we'll see you in my next video.